Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Badminton Unlimited. Coming up, we look ahead to the first BWF major event of the year, the Total BWF Sudirman Cup 2019, as the world's best shuttlers get ready to battle for the World Mixed Team Championships title. Twice a silver medalist at the Sudirman Cup, we speak exclusively with Peter Gader about his badminton journey. I want to go as, as far as possible. I want to become the best. And they were looking at me like, yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Plus, we rewind the clock to 1999 for another BWF Classic match. The Sudirman Cup celebrates its 30th year in a few days' time in Nanning, China. On the 19th of May, the first BWF major event of the season will commence. Here's all you need to know about the main contenders in Group 1, who will be battling for the Total BWF Sudirman Cup 2019 crown. Top seeds Japan, who are in Group 1A with Thailand and Russia, face their own pressures. With Tokyo 2020 on the horizon, every major event carries enormous significance to the team. The Sudirman Cup is a prominent title missing from Japan's trophy cabinet. The men won the Thomas Cup in 2014, while the women recaptured the Uber Cup in 2018 after a 37-year gap. The Japanese are aware that this year is likely to be their best shot at the Sudirman Cup, boasting top-notch talent in all five categories. But in a curious twist of fortune, their strongest and most consistent performers in women's doubles seem vulnerable this season, having won only three HSBC BWF World Tour titles, just as the World Mixed Team Championships draw near. They'll also be hoping that Arisa Higashino recovers in time from the ankle injury she suffered at the Badminton Asia Championships 2019. Japan will open their campaign against Russia on the 20th of May, with Thailand taking on the Russians the following day. The highly anticipated tie between Japan and Thailand will be played on the 22nd of May. It's been 30 years since the Indonesians won the Sudirman Cup. That was in 1989, when the tournament debuted in Jakarta. Indonesia is hoping for a strong performance this time, given their strength in men's singles, men's doubles and women's doubles. The Indonesian Badminton Association has announced a 20-member squad, with young guns Jonathan Christie and Anthony Sinisuka Ginting representing Indonesia in men's singles. World number ones Marcus Fernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjara Sutamujo will compete in men's doubles, as will Mohamed Ahsan, Hendra Setiawan, and Fajr Alfian Mohamed Rian Adianto. Gregoria Mariska Tunjung and Fitriani Fitriani will lead the women's singles charge, while Gracia Poli and Apriani Narahayi will compete in women's doubles, with Nikutut Mahadewi Istarani likely to be a reserve player. Placed alongside Denmark and England, Indonesia's road to the knockout stage seems fairly simple, with the Danish squad going through a period of transition. The matchup between the two will be the final encounter of Group 1B on the 22nd of May. Karena kita tahu bahwa Sudirman Cup adalah salah satu mungkin salah satu target dan salah satu pertandingan yang cukup penting karena nama e, Bapak Sudirman dipakai sebagai kejuaraan e, bergu campuran ya dan Indonesia baru satu kali. Tentunya kita juga berharap bahwa pertandingan e, di sana nanti kita bisa mendapatkan hasil yang maksimal. Persiapan sendiri dari semua sektor kita saat ini terus mempersiapkan diri tidak hanya untuk e, menuju Sudirman tapi juga dengan adanya kualifikasi Olimpiade itu juga. Group 1C with Chinese Taipei, Korea and Hong Kong promises to be the most closely fought cluster in Group 1, with each of these teams capable of causing an upset. Chinese Taipei are seeded fourth based on the world ranking of their top players and pairs on the 5th of March 2019. The team has two strong singles players in Cho Tianchen and Tai Tzu Ying, while in doubles, Li Yang and Wang Qilin are critical to their fortunes. Defending champions Korea haven't had much to shout about lately. Sung Ji Hyun and Son Wan Ho's recent injuries are enormous setbacks. However, the recent success of their women's doubles pairs, Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young, will boost the aspirations of a team that seems to be finding their footing this season. 
The Koreans, who exceeded all expectations in the last edition with a young squad, will surpass any achievement in their history if they can repeat their Gold Coast heroics. There are no easy fixtures in this group. Chinese Taipei open their campaign against Hong Kong on the 19th of May, while Korea will face Hong Kong the next day, and the final tie sees Chinese Taipei lock horns with Korea on the 22nd of May. 지금 했던 거 그대로 경험해가지고 단체전 이만큼 더 책임감 있게 경기를 뛰려고 생각하고. China seeded second are favourites to top Group 1D, but will have to contend with a strong challenge from India and Malaysia. The hosts face the daunting prospect of regaining the trophy in front of an expectant home crowd, with a team that has a few questions to answer. Once nearly unbeatable in women's singles and women's doubles, their fortunes in these two categories took a downturn after the Rio Olympics. However, there have been signs recently that things are looking up. Chen Yufei and Cheng Chinchen, Jia Yi Fan's victory at the Yonex All England Open 2019, proved that China is still a force to be reckoned with in these two categories. India will be banking on their strength in singles with the likes of Pusala V. Sindhu, Saina Newal, and Kidami Srikant in their lineup, while their doubles pairs can be dangerous opponents. Malaysia, meanwhile, will be without the services of Lee Chong Wei after doctors advised him against exerting himself. Malaysia have strong pairs in men's doubles and mixed doubles, and if their emerging players in the other disciplines can deliver, pre-tournament expectations in the group could turn topsy-turvy. Malaysia clashed with China in their opening fixture on the 19th of May before facing India on the 21st of May. The final fixture sees China face India in a tricky encounter on the 22nd of May. Shiroshan 把这个心态放好就行了，把自己最好的打出来。其实没有人会说他，不管是输赢，我觉得其实不管是看的人也好，或者教练也好，或者他自己也好，最好就是能够把自己东西完全的发挥。如果是好的话，能够超水平，那就
the deciding match, the ladies doubles. It's been 22 years in coming. Our Denmark going to claim the Sudamin Cup for the first time, when it's their first final since 1999. Extraordinary. Japan had never even reached the semi final of the Sudaman Cup. Tomorrow they will contest the final. China for a tenth time. They will lift the prestigious trophy. A sixth consecutive title. a match throughout the entirety of the competition. Such is their dominance. China are champions once more. Eighth time that China will lift the Sudaman Cup. The world mixed See, he did that, he's really pushing. And the moment of victory. I'm the world number one, says Lindan. And this time, the victory for the world and Olympic champion. that it is the two-time Olympic champion, Lin Dan, who wins the third match. The moment of victory. The moment when Korea, for a fourth time in the Sudaman Cup history, become world mixed team champions. Time for a quick break here on Badminton Unlimited, but stay with us as we reveal the week's biggest movers and shakers in the HSBC Race to Guangzhou rankings. Plus, we sit down with Denmark's Peter Gader as he reflects on his legendary status. We want to aim as high as possible. If that brings you to, to a legend status, well, I'm, I'm very happy and very honored about, about that. Welcome back. Following the Barford and Thompson New Zealand Open 2019 last week, there has been a lot of movement in the HSBC race to Guangzhou rankings. In men's singles, Auckland champion Jonathan Christie is the week's biggest climber, jumping four places to third. A semi-final finish in New Zealand sees Lindan advance two spots into fourth, while Anthony Sinisuka Ginting moves up by one into seventh after a quarter-final showing at the Super 300 tournament. Victor Axelson continues to lead the race with Kenta Momota in second. 
Similarly, Ratchanot Intanon keeps her place atop the women's singles rankings. Akane Yamaguchi's semi-final exit in Auckland ensures she maintains second place. In fact, the top six in women's singles remains unchanged, with Barford and Thompson New Zealand Open runner-up Leisha Ray the week's biggest mover, climbing eight places to break into the top eight. India Sainanewa has also risen to seventh following a round of 32 finish in New Zealand. Mohamed Ahsan and Hendra Setiawan lead the men's doubles rankings after being crowned New Zealand Open champions. The Indonesians overtake Japan's Takeshi Kamura and Keigo Sonoda, who were knocked out in the semi-finals in Auckland. Malaysia's Govi Shem, Tanui Kiong and Aaron Chia So Wu Yik climb three places each into fourth and fifth respectively. New Zealand runners-up Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe also climb three spots into eighth. Women's doubles remains unchanged at the top, with Mayu Matsumoto and Wakana Nagahara ruling the roost after reaching the quarterfinals in New Zealand. Compatriots Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota climb one spot into second following their semi-final showing in Auckland, while a runners-up finish sees Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi move three places into third. The week's biggest shakers are Korea's Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young, who move six places into seventh after being crowned New Zealand Open champions. In mixed doubles, Auckland winners Chan Ping Sun and Go Liu Ying move up a place into second, with their opponents in the final, Praveen Jordan and Malati Deva Octavianti, climbing three spots into third. A quarter-final finish in New Zealand for Go Sun Huat and Lai Siobhan Jamie sees them climb up a place into sixth. Thailand's Dechapol Puabarana Crow and Sapsri Teratanachai continue to lead the pack. The HSBC BWF World Tour takes a break with a focus turning to the Total BWF Sudirman Cup 2019. The World Tour resumes in early June with the Crown Group Australian Open 2019. Through your career, you are not thinking about, I want to become a legend. You just want to do better all the time. You want to put targets for everyday practice, for, for your career. You want to aim as high as possible. If that brings you to, to legend status, well, I'm, I'm very happy and very honored about that. A true legend in his own right. Peter Gader was one of the most dedicated and passionate shuttlers of his era. The Dane topped the world ranking from 1998 to 2001, won the All England Open in 1999, and was a five-time European champion. Gader spent some time with Badminton Unlimited, reflecting on his 17-year career and talking about the future of badminton, as well as his passion for the sport. You know, I grew up in a very, very small city in, in, in Denmark and everything that mattered to me when I grew up was, was sports. Uh, in my case, uh, you know, I tried different sports, but mainly uh, football and badminton, they, they had a, a lot of interest for me. I wanted to wake up every day and play football, play badminton. I could do it for hours each day because, you know, the passion about competing, the passion about trying to do the strokes or the movements better and better and better, it, it was just a, like the most natural thing for me. Uh, I remember growing up in this small city, very local environment, and people were asking me uh, what do you want to do with this, and uh, I was very clear in my message, I want to go as, as far as possible, I want to become the best. And they were looking at me like, yeah, yeah good luck with that. Uh, but. Uh, I managed to, to go uh, all the way, I think, and uh, I did that because of uh, great termination, determination, but also, most importantly of all, the, you know, a passion for the game. When you grow up as a young player, you don't think about earning big money or uh, creating a life out of... Uh, you only think about, hey, if, if I could wake up every day and do my, my sport, my hobby as my life, wow. I would, I would be lucky. Uh, that would be a dream. Once you set these dreams alive, you set this passion alive, there's, there's no looking back. If you reach one level, you want to go for the next one. If you win one big tournament, you want to go for the next one. 
There's always something you can do better. There's always something uh, you can achieve more. Since I quit my career in 2012, well, I think it was almost strange for me not to fight these battles uh, over and over. Uh, you kind of miss them. What is, what is the next uh, mountain you have to climb? What is the next challenge you have to master? Uh, so, of course, in, after badminton, you're going to have to set targets in, in other parts of your life. So I tried to do that, but it was kind of a really big transition. When I look back at my career, uh, what I miss the most is not, is not thinking about the big titles, it's not thinking about uh, uh, only the winning moments. Uh, of course, of course you, you treasure that, you remember that. But I, I think the, the, the everyday fire, the everyday passion for, for trying to push yourself is, is what I miss the most. I think we have to be very proud of our sport of, of badminton. I think we can do a lot more things to bring out badminton as a global sport and not only popular in, uh, in badminton countries uh, in Asia and Denmark. And, you know, we need to bring out badminton to a, to a wider audience to make it a global sport. And to do that, we, we need to do an, an effort uh, from the sport itself and, and from, from the, the big stars of the game. In 1999, Denmark created history by reaching their first Duman Cup final, having failed to get past the semi-finals in their five previous World Mixed Team Championships. A key member of that Denmark team 20 years ago was then world number one, Peter Gader. In the semi-finals, 22-year-old Gader went up against 17-year-old Taufik Hidayat in a repeat of the All England Open final earlier that year, which Gader won. This Denmark versus Indonesia clash is our BWF Classic Match of the Week. Good positive start though from the young Indonesian. As Smash is on the line. Done. Well, kept his calm. Here he at. And so too is Peter Gader repaying the compliment. Brilliant. A little French fist tells the story. That's wide. Denmark have taken the first game. Just brilliant. That's brilliant. So difficult with the vertically falling shuttle to time the smash. Match point for Denmark. Look at 
that scoreline. 15-4, 15-1. Well, that's it for this episode of Babbitton Unlimited. Join us again next week as the BWF and HSBC launch a new outdoor badminton project in Guangzhou. So before I, my games, I like to do some foam rolling and roll out any tight muscles that I might have. And we get more insight into an athlete's life as we follow Gronje Somerville in competition for a day. In the meantime, remember to log on to BWFSudirmanCup.com for all the latest news and features on the Total BWF Sudirman Cup 2019. Bye for now.